Hi, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at how the current generation AMD and Nvidia graphics cards tackle the 12th installment in the Call of Duty series, Black Ops 3. Twenty fifteen wouldn't be complete without a new Call of Duty title. Last year it was Advanced Warfare, and this year it's the third installment in the Black Ops series. Visually, Advanced Warfare was a big step forward from previous Call of Duty titles, and PC gamers were rewarded with a superior-looking game. Despite using the same IW game engine as Black Ops Two, we found Black Ops Three to be a significant step forward, and I should point out that the game engine has been heavily modified. Developer Treyarch recommends gamers arm themselves with at least a second-generation Core i5 processor or a quad-core FX processor. For graphics firepower, a GTX 760 or R9 270X is recommended, and we assume that's for playable 1080p performance. But those of you considering upgrading to a current generation mid-range to high-end graphics card for Black Ops 3, we've run some benchmarks to show you what kind of performance you can expect. The minimum and average frame rate was recorded using fraps at the popular 1080p resolution, as well as 1440p and 4K. The maximum in-game quality settings were used at each resolution and we selected the fast approximate anti-aliasing mode, otherwise known as FXAA. Benchmarking takes place at the start of the life mission and runs for about 90 seconds. And here's a recording of the benchmark pass. Please note that we actually found the single player campaign to be more demanding than the multiplayer portion of the game. Those interested in multiplayer performance can expect to see a 20-30% to increase in frame rate performance over the following results. All this chaos you're witnessing is caused by one man. The man we are trying to apprehend. We believe he's headed for the headquarters of the Coalescence Corporation. Is this a terrorist attack? Yes, this is a terrorist attack. We need the full support of you and your men before this gets much, much worse. Let's go! Still in there? I'm still me. We spoke in the hospital. But your mind was made up. You never left me behind. I'm not leaving you. What does it want? Why is it doing this? Right now, I think it's in panic. It's confused, scared. All it wants is to ensure its own survival. Hendrix represents an opportunity to spread the other hosts. It knows we're coming. It's watching our every move. First up, we see that the GeForce GTX 970 managed a very playable 72 FPS average at 1080p, and never dipped below 63 FPS. The Radeon R9 390 was slightly better, with a minimum of 65 FPS and an average of 74 FPS. Beyond that, the performance continues to slowly increase as we get to the more expensive graphics cards before arriving at 102 frames with the GTX 980 Ti. Increasing the resolution to 1440p saw the 970 and 390 drop below 60 FPS on average, while the minimum was just above 40 FPS. There was surprisingly little difference between the GTX 970 and GTX 980, and the jump from the GTX 980 to the Fury was quite noticeable. That 16% increase in minimum frame rate really made a big difference. As is often the case, we find that 4K will require more than one GPU to deliver perfectly smooth gameplay with all the eye candy turned up. Here, a single 980 Ti was good for just 36 FPS, while the frame rate did drop as low as 29 FPS. We found that Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is one of those games that really requires at least an average of 60 frames per second. And in fact, if you can keep the minimum frame rate above 60 frames, then the game plays very well. Once the average frame rate drops to around 40 FPS, you really start to notice the frame rate lag. That said, at 1080p, we were able to achieve exceptional performance with the GTX 970 and R9 390, as both rendered more than a 60 frame per second minimum. Jumping to 1440p saw all graphics cards tested suffer a pretty drastic frame rate hit. The 970 and 390, for example, dropped to a 40 frame minimum with an average of around 50 FPS. At this res, the AMD Fury graphics cards or the 980 Ti really required for perfectly smooth gameplay. Finally, at 4K, the game looked amazing but was extremely demanding on the GPU. The GeForce GTX 980 Ti, for example, dipped below 30 FPS at times and only managed an average of 36 frames per second. 
This isn't unplayable, but it certainly wouldn't be acceptable in competitive multiplayer scenarios. For those of you wondering, I've briefly looked at CPU performance and found that the Core i7 Sandy Bridge through to Skylake processors deliver the best results, while the Core i5's and quad-core AMD FX range isn't far behind. The AMD FX 8350, for example, saw over 70% utilization across all eight threads, while the Core i7 6700K only saw around 45% utilization. As always, we'll be posting these graphs and a text summary up to our forum at hardwareunbox.com. If you've got any questions at all, then please let me know in the comments. And for more videos like this, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.